uh, today we're going to be talking about a new type of stochastic process. Um, I have a section in, in the book about this, and I, the book is linked in, in the description of this video. Um, very popular type of stochastic process. Uh, some of you may have heard of it's called uh, Brownian motion. It has applications in all different fields, physics, finance, obviously statistics. Um, and we're just going to give sort of the introduction here, a couple of the cool properties of Brownian motion, and some later videos show some interesting results. So let's just start by actually drawing like one sample path of Brownian motion. Um, here I've got uh, my x-axis, which is time. Remember, stochastic process. It means a random variable that evolves throughout time. Um, I'll call you know my random variable x sub t, capital X, random variable sub t means you know it's indexed at time t that it has different values. And a Brownian motion might look something like this. Okay, kind of just looks like a, a kind of random thing bumping along. Um, and it's actually really cool that we have the tools of probability and statistics to really succinctly define a Brownian motion. We can just define a Brownian motion as x sub t, so the random variable you know, at, at time t, has a normal distribution, mean zero, variance t. And that's it. Very, you know, it's going to get a little bit more complex, but you can see how uh, nice and succinct this definition is, and we can take a second to think about it. Um, so at time t, and this is, you know, we're thinking about, I drew here an actual sample path to see what it would look like, but uh, we're thinking at starting from time zero, the random variable x at time t, so x sub t, has a mean of zero, so expected on average it will be zero, and has a variance of t. And this t is obviously the same as this t, you know, as this t increases, this, this t goes up one to one. Very cool. Um, so the longer time we're looking forward in the future, the higher the variance will be. Okay, and you know what does that mean? I'll, I'll draw another. Yeah, I'll draw another example. Um, so you know th what basically this is saying is like at time t equals three compared to time t equals ten. Um, at time zero, we expect you know that this. Basically, at time zero, when we think of what x will be at time t, so x sub 3, we can see that it's kind of a, it's a normal distribution before we observe it, um, centered at zero, and it doesn't have too much variance, right? So, you know, the basically, there will be a lot of values, a lot of values kind of within here, and there will be less values kind of out, you know, outside of the, the range, you know, farther from the mean of the normal distribution. Whereas at time 10, we can see how it's all it's still centered at zero, but the variance is a little bit wider, right? We're less sure. And that makes sense because it has more time to move around. So like a value out here is more likely at time 10 than it is out here. A value out here is more likely at time 10 than it is at, at time 3. I actually didn't draw that at time 3, but the principle kind of holds. So let's say this is, this is time. Um, so that's kind of the idea, is the longer that this is going, the, the more variance it has, which, which kind of makes sense. Um, and the next sort of cool property that we can think about is uh, increments. So an increment basically means you know a change in some small time interval. So if we say x sub t minus x sub s, um, uh, so x at the, the value of x at time t minus the value of x at time s, so kind of a difference. You can think of like if this is time s and this is time t, then x minus s is is right is this value is the difference between those two. So x sub t minus x sub s is a normal distribution, also has mean zero, but the variance is t minus s instead of t, and that kind of makes sense, right? Because we are you know basically starting from time s, we're going forward t minus s more times, so that's the amount of time we have. The mean is still zero. You know, you can think of, I drew it here, uh, saying this is time s. You can think of starting at time s and then going t minus s more. You basically just have another Brownian motion from the spot where you kind of started. Um, and even if s isn't quite at zero, right, well, we don't care if s or at t or at x sub s or x sub t is at zero. We care about the difference between those. So even though, you know, here s starts in negative terrain, um, we just care about, you know, the difference between the, the increment, the change. So, um, Basically, still will be a mean zero because we don't expect the you know on the, on average the mean not on average but the mean um, 
of the new increment that we're adding will, will still be zero. The variance will be t minus s because we're going t minus s more time forward. Um, and finally, the other cool property is that uh, this increment, s sub t, uh, x sub t minus x sub s, is independent. This is the sign I'm going to use for independent. It's independent of x sub w minus x sub b. Uh, x sub, sorry, x sub v. Mix this up. Minus x sub w minus x sub w minus x sub v. And uh, this is for t greater than s. I didn't clarify above. This is also for t greater than s, although we have negative variance. It's for t greater than s. This is for w greater than v. And this is for non-overlapping um, um, t equals a t minus s and w minus v. And what that means is non-overlapping basically means that um, you know if t is 5 and s is 3, so this is x sub, x sub 5 minus x sub 3, x sub w could be like 10, and you know w could be 10 and v could be 7. We have 5 and 3 and 10 and 7. Those are non-overlapping, right? They're non-overlapping intervals. Whereas if we have like 8 and 2 and 11 and 4, they're overlapping, right? 8 to 2, 11 to 4, they overlap from 4 to 8. So um, uh, basically, it makes sense if they're overlapping that they're dependent because, you know, if we have, if we observe kind of part of the interval and like if these intervals are overlapping and we observe this difference, like the difference that x sub t minus s sub x is huge, we have information that x sub w minus x sub v is also huge. But this is saying like two independent intervals, like I can draw the two, two um, overlapping intervals, which I can draw here, are going to be independent. So maybe this is one interval and this is another interval. Um, the difference between, you know, this would be x sub t, this would be x sub s. So this difference is independent of this difference, x sub w minus x sub v. And again, remember we're thinking about differences, right? Like, in this case, we start at a positive value, but we, you know, go to a negative value, which means the difference is negative, right? You know, you can just imagine we're basically starting over and this, this value is, is zero, it's our new start. Whereas in this case, we started at a negative value and we ended to a positive value, so the increment is positive, right? So all we're carrying, you know, in this case, all we're thinking about is increments. In this case, we're just thinking about increments. Um, so again, just to recap, uh, x sub t is normal. Uh, the mean is always zero. Um, doesn't I might have spoke earlier? It doesn't mean on average it's zero. It's just mean that the mean is zero. The most likely value is zero. Um, the variance grows with time. The variance is time. So the you know the more time we go, the more unsure we're going to be. You can see that here. You know early on, you know if we start at zero earlier on, we have more confidence about where x sub t will be. It's less likely to see a value far away from zero. Whereas the farther time goes on. Uh, the wider the distribution gets, the more likely we are to see a, a big value, which makes sense because the you know has more time to drift around. Um, we know that the increments are still normally distributed, and even if the increment like starts in negative territory or starts in positive territory, um, so like x sub s starts in positive territory, the change between s and t is still normally distributed with a mean of zero, and the variance is just the time that elapses from time s to time t, which is t minus s. And finally, we see this independent increment thing. So here's, you know, the t and s, and here's w and v. These are independent increments, as long as they're not overlapping. You know, if I if I said there was an increment like that mostly overlapped, obviously knowing about one of the increments, we get information about the other one. Um, so this is a really cool process. Uh, it, I should also mention that it's symmetric, right? Which kind of makes sense. Um, Actually, we're going to talk more about the symmetry of Brownian motion and how it's useful in the next video. But a very cool process and relatively easy to describe with our probability tools. Um, but it, there's a lot of complexities within Brownian motion, which we are going to get to in our next video. So see you then.